I am giving in to all your requests because you don't follow me on Twitter, nor do you read my blog at Julesy.com. Hmm. And I'm going to give you my opinion <laughs> on the Light Girls documentary that aired this past Monday on Oprah Winfrey's network. As always, you can support my Smart Brown Girl movement by picking up a Smart Brown Girl shirt at shop.smartbrowngirl.com for all you people that might not be familiar. Ooh, here we go. Smart Brown Girl. T-shirts, sweatshirts, and currently we're doing a limited pre-run sale through this week for sorority Smart Brown Girl sweatshirts in support of the real sisterhood of the Divine Nine already written a lengthy post at nauseum about my opinion of light girls and I am going to try my best to be fair. I found it to be kind of mindlessly offensive in the narrative that Bill Duke and his production team constructed out of these gunshot interviews. Now that's not to say that I didn't think there was any value or any insight offered in the entire two hours that the documentary aired. Well, hour and 20 minutes if you take away all the daggone advertising that was ran. I think Soledad O'Brien gave excellent points. Spot on, and I tweeted her my love and she tweeted her love back to me, so yes. Light Girls had the potential to have a very productive conversation about the full spectrum of the issue of colorism in the context of black Americans. Light Girls packaged itself as an intelligent conversation and what it really was was just simply all over the place. The first problem with this narrative is that what does it mean to even identify as black? I think that's a great conversation to have because a lot of us have this really strong attachment to the identity as a black person and we don't really understand the etymology of the identity of race is just kind of the confusion is kind of baked in at its core. It's not a very defined box. It is a circular kind of identity. There's a lot of gray and I've discussed this in my video on texture discrimination and white women in the natural hair community. Like, you know, there's a lot of gray that I exists in the black identity. So who are we to say does identify as black and what defines one's blackness? This kind of interesting quagmire has kind of come about in the context of the black American identity in that we directly identify our blackness with struggle. And so when you take away someone's right to say, hey, this is my struggle, and my struggle equates to your struggle, people tend to internalize that as you're taking away from my identity as a black person. It's just so wet for me to sit here and complain about getting teased for thinking that I'm cute. I mean, one, I do think I'm cute. So like, really? People really aren't attacking you because like, you're beautiful. Like that, like, if I don't allow white women to get on here and complain about, oh my gosh, I like just always got so much shade for being beautiful and eyes that people just automatically think that like life is perfect for me and that I have everything I, like that's, it's, it's shallow. Like, you know, I just felt like light girls really harped on this kind of narrative about light skinned women, our struggle is being told that we're beautiful because light skin is beautiful. Narrative come to the detriment, again, of darker skinned women. I don't feel like I need to compete in the struggle awards to verify my blackness. You know, I don't have to say that I'm from the hood or tell you how bad I got it about my skin color to equate to being black. It was just crazy to me to hear these women complain about, and I really feel like some of the, the conversation was chopped up to make it seem like it was a complaint when it really wasn't about being asked where they're from. Depends on where I'm at. You know, in New York, I'm either Nigerian, from Benin, or Dominican. Like, I'm either African or like Afro-Latina. And so I don't ever feel like that comes at a threat of my blackness. Like, are we really, come? and for me, it's a conversation starter. And it's like, I'm culturally aware, so I can carry on this conversation. It's not a problem for me. And it's such a, pithy complaint. It's a lot of brown skin. Like if we're gonna say that the litmus test for being able to say you're light skin is the brown paper bag, 
I mean, Tatiana Ali, by no stretch of the imagination, is a, is a light-skinned woman. And the part of the narr the conversation that nobody wants to acknowledge is that this, as someone on my Facebook page, is the scale of whiteness and having European-esque features. Even on this YouTube landscape, I keep hearing, "Oh my gosh, your light skin would not be hair." And you know, I heard that growing up all the time. It's not a struggle for me. I don't, you know, I'm not holding on to it. I can laugh at it. <laughs> it's funny. It's silly. It's simple-minded. Throughout the documentary, it, it keeps being expressed that to be light-skinned is to have long hair, it's to have silky, curly hair, it's to have light-colored eyes, you know? It's, it's, and that's so disrespectful, again, to the breadth and the diversity that it encompasses women of the African diaspora. This is why I find so much amusement in baby hairs because it really kind of changes the spectrum of identity or for women, you know, for Tatiana Ali to come on, share in this kind of struggle narrative about being light skinned, and it's like, no, actually, you just have very flourishing baby hairs. It's irresponsible statements made in this entire documentary by a woman who goes by Onyx Monopoly. Because I were the lighter one, the men from the time I was two on up, I felt like I was this little sex object. I was so beautiful. The lighter girl, in my opinions, get the most abuse. So, I'm not, I'm just, I'm going, I mean, I feel like y'all should have enough comprehension skills and intelligence. I believe in my smart brown girls, boys, men, women's, people that just finding me out right now. I believe that y'all are intelligent enough to deduce why that is offensively irresponsible, ignorant, and just every sort of, come on, throw your own words in here, girl. Give them to me. That's what that is. Like, I don't even understand why someone would attach their sexual abuse to their skin complexion. Do you realize that predators who go after young girls are going to use the most low hangingest of fruits to intimidate you into not telling on them, to you control your mind and make you feel like what they're doing is okay. I don't understand why there were so many men. It's just a lot of the men were Again, very offensive. I don't understand the point of Dr. Gabe, the psychologist, who's talking about the joy in seeing fair-skinned people. Like when you're equating the levels of dopamine in your brain to when you visualize someone with fair skin, like, and so you're saying that scientific, see, you see where this goes? Um, and then when you got to the whole section about dating, like, come again, we are, we are, we are simplifying this idea that light is right. We are feeding into the ideal of white supremacy. They had a bunch of comedians and these men are inflecting humor because that's what they do professionally. And it just was so inappropriate to the context of the conversation. I don't date with men who find my complexion to be ideal. You know, the moment a man tells me, ooh, you so beautiful cause you light skin, I'm done. I don't wanna deal with a color struck Negro. Like, no, I'm not. Moving colorism outside the issue of how it exists in the Americas, you know, moving it into Nigeria as if all Nigerian women are just skin bleaching because light skinned people don't exist in Nigeria. Now I'm going to give that a moment because I live in Houston and I don't know how many conversations I've had telling, trying to explain to somebody that my behind is not from Oweri. Like I am not Nigerian. No. The biggest sin of the Light Girls documentary was that it did not fairly discuss the application of light skin privilege. You're building up this, you're reiterating that, again, light skin is desirable, it's ideal, and then what is the privilege in that? The person that really was given enough air time to drop some honesty into that was Soledad O'Brien, and she did acknowledge that she when she started her career in journalism, journalism most of the black women looked like her and she is on the very fair end not only with complexion but hair texture and features of being identifiable as a black woman and what a lot of us have a problem with in acknowledging our light skin privilege is that it people will try to use that to take away from what we have earned or worked hard for and and it's like no i'm not saying that you didn't work hard or you weren't savvy or you didn't put in a genuine effort to get to where you got. I'm just saying you had a leg up. It's great that you took advantage of that leg up as you should, 
But, you know, it doesn't denote all the work that you did once you got that leg up. I still respect Soledad immensely. I think she's worked very hard and she's very humble and very honest with herself. And she deserves all the greatest that has come to her. And it's not to say that a black woman of darker complexion can't achieve the same thing she can. The ball game is just slightly different. I'm very well aware of my privilege when I, you know, something like this or a big curly wig, like people's reaction to me is extremely different from when I walk out the house with my natural hair texture. You know, fine, and that's why I started this smart brown girl movement and identified it as brown and not black girl because I didn't want people to get mirrored up in this de that defining what it means to be black and who qualifies as black and who doesn't because women with any sort of melanin we all go through a very similar struggle at its base and so I didn't want the struggle of war comp the struggle competition to happen but it really is what what the struggle of the light-skinned woman really is is the struggle to be allowed to identify as black without someone questioning um, her blackness and that that takes on many shapes and forms and there could have been a great conversation around that Let me know in the comments down below. What were your thoughts on the light girl documentary? My blog post will be linked down below turn off your ad blocker check out my blog click an ad and help me pay Sally Mae as always Thanks for watching do this and I'm still trying to understand the light-skinned woman who didn't see an image of herself till Spice Girls with Scary Spice came out in the 90s because I'm trying to figure out what rock was she not Lisa Bonet girl Holly Berry Mariah Carey? I got questions. Let me